Welcome back to Snowrunner guys, and this is Nick's custom K1500 extended cap. Now, imagine if someone took the base K1500 from Snowrunner and completely got rid of it and started all over and made it an extended cab and then gave you a bunch of customization options. That's pretty much what we have here right now. Now, one of the interesting things about this truck is the fact that when you actually first get it, it comes as a stock truck. I mean, it's got stock wheels, stock ride height. It is very, very base model and very, very basic when you first get it. However, when you dive into the customization, you'll see very quickly that there's a lot that you can adjust and a lot that you can add. So let's go into the customization first. Now, your stock 350 is going to have you at a C plus power to weight rating, which is pretty slow. Then you can go up to a tuned 350, which takes you from C plus to A. And then a swapped 454 takes you to an S plus. And then the performance edition 454 is even more powerful still. So what we're going to do right now is I think we're going to go with the, hmm, I think I'm going to go with the tuned 350 first, and then after we've driven it around for a little bit, we're going to use our mobile garage to swap in the uh, performance edition of the 454. So let's go with the tuned 350, and this is where it gets really interesting because the gearbox modes are wild. So you've got a 7-speed for towing. You've got a 11 speed, you've got a stock 4 speed, and then you've got a custom 6 speed. Lots of weird options, but I'm going to go with the custom 6 speed. And then we have the tow suspension, and actually two different tow suspensions, interestingly enough. Stock suspension, lifted suspension, and lifted er suspension. And the extra lifted suspension doesn't actually seem like it's all that tall. So your stock tires are going to be a 32, but I was going to say maybe it just doesn't look all that tall in the garage. Maybe it'll look taller when we get it outside the garage. So stock-wise, you're coming on a 32. Then you can go up to a 35-inch bogger, but there's actually a couple of different varieties of that you can go for. Or you can go for a 35-inch KO2, a 39-inch bogger, or a 38-inch Baja Claw. I'm going to go with the 39-inch bogger. And then winch-wise, we've already got an offline winch in it. Snorkel-wise, we have two standard options, really. So I'm going to go with the Tall Mushroom. And then we've got the Trunk Repair Supplies, which I'm not actually sure where it puts those because this thing is weird in the fact that it doesn't allow you to actually rotate the camera around in the garage. Although, maybe later on down the road, that will get updated. So let's see. Rooftop-wise, you can do beacons and fog lights. I'm not going to go for either of those, but I think they're really cool options. And front bumper, you got the front bumper standard or with trim. And then you've also got this iron cross front bumper and a off-road front bumper which is both of them really all of them are interesting custom options i think i'm going to go with the off-road front bumper then the logo you can actually put a z71 sticker on the side and that gives you 100 repair parts two spare wheels and 27 units of fuel which is interesting you've got one rear bumper option and then you also have a stock bed a bed with a roll bar and you also have a flat bed although i'm going to be sticking with the stock bed for this particular build now you've got the bed trim or the entire truck's trim. I'm going to leave those off, although they are quite interesting. They're quite cool. I think for this particular build, it would be better if we left them off. And then miscellaneous-wise, we've got the angled sun visor, which seems like it's not quite wide enough for the windshield, admittedly, but I do think it's still a cool idea. And then, whoop, completely backed out of that too early. Front, let's see, front wheel well, which... If we take that away, I guess it's just kind of, I guess it's just kind of like there. It's not visual. It's just there. So I am going to do the light bar because I do think that looks good. And then they're apparently American Force wheels, but we can't see them because we can't rotate around to the side. So I guess we're not going to look at those right now. Now, what I do like about this truck is that all of the colors are like very, very well done. They're very bright. They're very vibrant and they look good. They look right. So we're going to actually scroll through some of these color choices and oh, wow. Okay. If you wanted to go with a really bright lime green, you definitely could. Although I do think these trucks look really good in blue. And so that's what I'm going to end up going with. And then you can actually see what's weird is you can put like a interior accessory in it. But, like, the camera doesn't go in there. So, I'm going to go with the Pine Forest. And now, we're going to go ahead and back out of the garage and see how this thing drives. It's interesting. It looks good. But the weird thing is, these 39-inch tires do not look like 39-inch tires. I don't know what it is about them. But, like, they do not look that big. 
Okay, so scout trailer wise, we've got kind of a nice mixture of scout trailers and medium duty trailers, which I like. And it doesn't feel all that slow, even with the tune 350, I dig it. So let's see, I doubt that it's gonna be able to, well, okay, yeah, no, no. I, I was curious if it would be able to fit like one unit of cargo in that bed. It probably can on the flat bed, just not in this particular one. Now let's see how the flex is. I'm very curious because the lifted suspension we went with is the highest one they'll give you. So let's see. Not bad, you just have to like, okay, there we go. We went just a little too far. Just a little too, yep. If you go too far, it's not a big fan of it. But the flex I've got to say is actually really realistic. Like they've done a good job of bringing that flex kind of into a realistic realm. Let's see if I can go up just a little bit more. There we go. Oh, just about, yep, that's like just a tiny bit over max flex because you can see that wheel is just barely picking up off the ground. Now, does it have a proper interior view? I mean, kind of, kind of. That might be something that he's gonna work on again in the future, but let's see how it actually drives. Put it through some tests and some challenges. Now. I could definitely tell you that if I was using this thing in the campaign mode, like as a, you know, like a modded campaign truck, I can definitely tell you that the Tune 350 uh, is not necessarily lacking power at all. I mean, I can only imagine how crazy it's gonna be when we put the 454 in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and run it up the hill climb with the Tune 350 and it should manage it no problem at all. Wow, it does not wanna shift up into fifth. It does not want to whatsoever. Oh my God. Dude, you can just throw it in high with the Tune 350 and it'll go up whatever. Like, it doesn't really even mind. Now, I do wonder how it's going to be through this rock section up here because it's a little, little long to be doing rock crawling like this. But let's see if it'll be somewhat okay with it. I can already tell you the answer is probably going to be no. Based on the predicament we've gotten ourselves into almost right off the bat. Come on. Yeah, she's not happy, dude. She's not happy at all. But I think we can work it back. Yep, there it, is. there it is. There it is. There it is. And I do really like the subtle details on it. The subtle details are awesome. So now let's actually swap in that modified 454, the Performance Edition 454, and go ahead and pause the game real quick just to make sure that it refreshed itself. And let's see what the difference in performance feels like. Okay, yeah, it gets up to fourth gear in like 10 feet. Yikes. Go ahead and ease it off of that. Oh! Just a tiny bit too late. No! Dude, oh man, I hate the quick winch. Oh, the quick winch strikes again. No! That quick winch is so annoying. Because, oh, it only, even when, well, apparently even when I try to select something, I can't select the right thing. So maybe I can't give the quick winch too much crap. All right, let's head for the mud and see how these boggers do in the mud. They are fairly narrow, so that should actually give them a big advantage. Wow, high range with the top engine is so fast. Wow, that changed the entire character of the truck in like no time. First mud lane knocked out, no issue. But the nice thing is that like, if you want to keep it at a certain balance level, there are different engines to accommodate different balance levels for this truck. So if you want it balanced one way, you can use one engine for that. If you want it balanced a different way, you can use a different engine for that. So again, there's really all sorts of different balance levels here that are available to everybody and really available to suit everybody's personal preference in terms of how they like their game to feel and how balanced they want their game to be. Now, the dips obstacle is, are you, that is the slowest roll I've ever seen. It was just like, just picking itself up on one side. Like, what? Easing it through. It's definitely not, oh God. It's definitely not going to like devour trails. I mean, you could do some light trail riding in it, but like, I don't think I would take this to like TNB trails or something. I mean, you could take it to, DN to TNB trails and do some of the like, you know, introductory trail sections, but like, I wouldn't take a rock crawling, but then again, it's not what this thing was made for. It's not what this mod was built for. So this was really meant to be a multi-purpose scout that could be used kind of as you would use a lifted pickup truck, not necessarily as you would use a crawler, but as you would use a lifted pickup truck. And I think it like fulfills that role very, very well. All right, let's go ahead and get ourselves out of there. Not bad. 
dude, honestly, I gotta say, it's doing really well. Like, it's not necessarily the world's most mind-blowing truck, but I think for what it's supposed to be, there's no way it's like, th there's no way they could have done a better job at making it, like, making it do what it was meant to do in the first place, which was to emulate, right, emulate the idea of a lifted pickup truck, but not necessarily a full-on crawler. Now, as we get closer and closer to the bridge jump, we already have, we already have that, lit, that, uh, that top engine, but what's weird is, we have the fast gearbox in it. So, and there's a tow, and there's a towing. Why is there towing and tow? Like, I, I don't understand the difference. Like, I feel like there's a little bit of a labeling, uh, labeling mix up there. But if I already have the gearbox that's labeled fast, that means I've got everything I need to go ahead and hit the bridge jump. Whoop! What I could see this thing being really good for is pulling, like, say, for example, like a pull-behind trailer with maybe your favorite crawler on it. That is definitely something I could see this thing being great for. So let's go ahead and get it right up to that edge, and let's go! Proper send! Okay, yeah, it doesn't like that. Oh, the camera's not a fan. There's sixth gear. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's a bit nose-heavy. Whoa! That's a lot more nose-heavy than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to stay pretty flat, but no, that nose just went... Meh, it just dove straight down. Whoa! That just, like, took an absolute nosedive, dude. That's nuts! That is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I'm going to go ahead and actually, like, repair that damage just real quick. Because I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like this thing got very, very, very damaged out very quickly. I do wonder what its water fording capability is like. Now, I know we don't normally test that, but I am very curious because we've got that snorkel, and I wonder if he's actually set the snorkel up correctly. Oh! You know, we didn't necessarily get to test whether or not the snorkel was set up correctly because I did not enter the river correctly. And I gotta say, the rock traction is really good. The rock traction is awesome. Oh, look at that! Look at that. Let me repair and refuel real quick. Dude, the pulley is spinning. Whoa! The crank pulley is spinning. Hang on. That's really cool. That's... Oh, all the pulleys are spinning. Whoa! The water pump pulley is spinning. The crank pulley is spinning. That's amazing. That's nuts. You can even see, like, the oil filter right there, like, where it connects to the bell housing. That's tremendous. I didn't even, I didn't even realize that that much work had gone into this thing, like with proper animated like engine pulleys and stuff like that. That's that's really really cool stuff. That is really 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 cool, and I have to give him mad props for that. Now, if you guys enjoyed this test, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this truck in the comment section down below. And if you are new around here and you would like to see more, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I'll see you guys in the next one.